Alabama lost to Vanderbilt. And that wasn't the only insane thing that happened to the AP Top 25 this week that actually benefited the Big 12. What we have to come together and understand now is the more parity, the more craziness that happens in college football, the better for the Big 12 at this point. Because guess what? We are the conference of craziness. We are the conference that can't seem to find any stability at the top because your number one team might be number one this week and number seven in two weeks because they find a way to lose two in a row because the Big 12 is that evenly matched. And in a world like that, you need more major college football teams losing so that your league has a better opportunity to get into the college football playoff. Here's the deal. If Alabama can lose to Vanderbilt, they can lose to pretty much anybody in the SEC. And and really, maybe that means that this year in college football, especially when Cal is hosting college game day, anybody can beat anybody. So all these like, oh, we don't we don't want to see Alabama play Utah in the college football playoff. It'd be a blow. We don't want to see Ohio State play Iowa State. Buddy, look, look, you're seeing Alabama lose to Vanderbilt. And not only that, number four, Tennessee loses to Arkansas, a fairly porous Arkansas team. How about number 25, Texas A&M? Boat racing, stomping Missouri. Number eight, Miami, I should have lost the game. If the officials don't step in, they lose the game to Cal. Cal, who we have made fun of all offseason. Number 10, Michigan, loses by double digits as Washington completely shuts down the Wolverines in the second half. Number 11, USC. Welcome to the Big Ten, baby. They're three and two now. Huh? Ole Miss losing to Kentucky last week. All of these games, 22 Louisville getting bounced by SMU. All of these games mean one major thing for the Big 12. Parity at the highest level in college football, which thus helps the Big 12. That itself is full of parity. That felt, was that like too philosophical? Was I, did that make sense? I wonder, Alabama got Tanya Harding this week. They got the... Can I? Okay, another aside. Who was Tanya Harding? Which was she the one that did the kneecapping thing, or did she get kneecapped? And how did, did they become friends? In the did they go on Oprah together? Which one was Tanya Harding? Because if she was the one that hit the other person's kneecaps, why do we only remember Tanya Harding's name and all of that? And if she was the one that got hit, I guess that's cool. But Alabama was Tanya Harding, or if Tanya Harding is bad guy, then Alabama is the one that got hit in the kneecap to Vanderbilt. The Big 12, we see this. Houston beat TCU. And maybe it's not a prime example because TCU is no Alabama. And honestly, Houston's probably better than Vanderbilt. But in the Big 12, what you're seeing is parity. But I, I want to make a, a bit of a caveat with that. Iowa State, BYU, Kansas State, Utah, Colorado, Texas Tech. These one loss Big 12 teams have placed themselves in a position where if we have three schools, four schools that end the year at 11 and one or 10 and two, that whole like, oh, well, the Big 12 is going to cannibalize itself. Wait, if if the rest of college football cannibalizes itself more than we do, we're in business. If Alabama is nine and three, BYU is 11 and two, loser of the Big 12 championship game. I can tell you who has to get into the college football in a 12 team format. And you might be like, oh, no. Alabama won at nine and three. I, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think there is an overarching narrative that the SEC at nine and three is going to beat out the Big Twelve when a team's eleven and two. When you have eleven wins, you're at a power four conference. You're in a conference that has depth. We know that a league that could have nine, ten teams go bowling. There's an ideal scenario where that top three ish range in the Big Twelve all has a real shot at the college football playoff. And honestly, the AP poll emulates that at this point. Bama's at seven, okay? So so let's let's break down a bit. We've already seen Georgia lose. We have seen Miami, basically, lose to Cal. Alabama, Tennessee, Ole Miss, Clemson. We've seen those teams lose. They sit ahead of Iowa State, who's at 11 right now, right there with Notre Dame. We've seen Notre Dame lose to NIU. We've seen LSU lose to USC. We have seen these teams lose. We haven't seen BYU lose. We haven't seen Iowa State lose. We, we saw Utah lose. We saw Kansas State lose, but they're still hovering right around in that range. You control your own destiny. When you're at 18, which is where Kansas State is right now, going into week seven, you've got a whole lot more football, a half a season left of football to move squarely into that top 11. If you're sitting at number seven and lose the Big 12 championship game and still have 11 wins, you have a real shot. Utah, Kansas State, BYU, Iowa State, Texas Tech, Colorado, 
of being a college football playoff team. That is what we're building in this conference is parity. Yes. But a bubble up there, the top three, where as long as those guys stay powerful, as long as those guys stay fairly unscathed, as long as we don't have TCU, Houston, Baylor, now Oklahoma State, the bottom half of this conference, Kansas, as long as we don't have them upsetting the upper half, the SEC has that right now. Ole Miss losing to Kentucky, Alabama losing to Vanderbilt. The Big Ten has that right now. USC losing to Minnesota. Washington, who lost to Washington State, beating Michigan. We're seeing the top half of a of these power two lose to the bottom half. We haven't really seen that in the Big 12 this year. Not yet, at least. We haven't seen Iowa State lose to a bottom dweller. We haven't seen BYU lose to a bottom dweller or Kansas State or Colorado or Utah. We've seen these teams. Maybe Utah, you could argue Arizona's kind of in that, in that category. For Texas Tech, they haven't lost a Big 12 game yet. For West Virginia, they're right there as well. What that marks to me, when the top half of your conference is not losing to the absolute bottom half of your league, you are building a very good shot for the college football playoff. If we can become 2007, if we can lean into 2007 energy, which was the craziest season in college football history, the Big 12 can get two or three teams into the playoff. I said this a couple weeks ago, and it is a, it's an even better scenario shaking up now when Alabama is losing to Vanderbilt, when Tennessee is losing to Arkansas, when the schools that are either terrible or going to fire their coach, like PJ Fleck is coaching for his job game in and game out at Minnesota. And they just beat the number 11 team in the country, scoring 14 points unanswered in the fourth quarter to come back and win Ole Miss losing to the same Kentucky team. They got blasted by South Carolina. When those leagues start cannibalize each other. Now that they're coast to coast, when those leagues start becoming more, even we have a real shot. I, I'm, Oh, you're a Big 12 propagandist. Yeah, yeah. Congrats. Did you read the name of the show? Did you? Locked on Big 12, 100%. But it is objective at this point with the way the top half is losing to the bottom half in both the SEC and the Big 10 that the Big 12 is in a good spot. Because our top half, they're not doing that. They're not messing around yet. Yet? Keyword yet. Because we keep saying anybody can beat anybody. Maybe. But kind of the way this league shakes out right now, shoot, I got a lot of teams there at the top that still are unscathed. A lot of teams there at the top still look pretty good. I know Kansas State lost. Yeah, to the second best team in the Big 12. And it wasn't a fluke, but you play that game 10 times, Kansas State's at least more competitive, if not in the driver's seat winning in half of them. BYU fans would agree with that. Play that game 10 times. Kansas State wins five. That's a good thing. We're not losing to chumps. Baylor's a chump right now. Kansas, they're a chump. TCU, UCF. Luckily, those schools aren't pulling upsets against the biggest teams in the Big 12. And that, we need to keep that going. Be Santa Claus. Coming up, West Virginia, good or no? Unlocked on Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's unbelievably passionate rants about the Big 12 are brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is where I go to say, I think Texas Tech, Quinn says, I think Texas Tech is going to win against Arizona on the road. I gave FanDuel $100. FanDuel said, bet. And then they gave me $190 because that's exactly what happened. I took the Texas Tech money line, ching, cash. NFL fans can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. FanDuel.com. Get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. It is America's number one sports book, and it's FanDuel.com. Visit FanDuel today.